Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today. State Senator James Settlemeyer joins us. He's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada News. Nevada is suffering because of reckless Washington spending. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto voted to allow hundreds of millions of dollars of COVID relief funds to be wasted on frivolous projects not in Nevada. A luxury resort in Florida, soccer stadium in New Jersey, skiing in Iowa, a poet in Connecticut, French operas in Washington, D.C. We need help in Nevada, not silly spending in other states. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against wasteful spending to stop inflation. Modern boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first-class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased to welcome back to the program State Senator James Settlemeyer of District 17. Pleasure to have you back, sir. Always a pleasure to be here, Sam. Thank you. So uh, this past weekend, as we're taping this, uh, was the uh, Basque Fry uh, out at Corley Ranch. What can you tell us from what you saw there? Good turnout, good enthusiasm. Uh, it's great to see individuals worried about trying to help turn the course of kind of how the state and how the nation's going. So fascinating speeches from individuals, of course, as always, and particularly I thought it was a very good speech by uh, Christy Noem of South Dakota. I just got done listening What was to her book. message? She just talked about how, you know, we need to make sure that we allow people to work. And, you know, she was the only state in the union that during COVID said, you know what, I'm not going to declare winners and losers. I'm not going to get into this discussion of whether or not you're essential or non-essential. Because if you're essential on tax day, then you're essential every day. And if you look at Nevada, you know, when we're talking about who could be open, who couldn't be open, it was interesting who became essential and who was non-essential. But then all of a sudden, if there was a government program, they didn't use the same list. So you had, you know, envision the retail association, you know, such as, you know, supermarkets and stuff like that. Well, they're essential. And educators were deemed non-essential. So they were told to stay home. But then if resources came out, they went to education first, not to those industries that we declared essential the first time. And I just think that's a little bit sad. Um, did she also have a message of bringing the party together? Correct. She tends to be on some issues a little bit more moderate uh, than some individuals, but you know, it's about, you go back to the Reagan concept, it's a big tent. You know, if there's room for everybody in there, let's have discussions and do what's best. Or as uh, Congressman Amaday always says, you know, the intramurals are over. Now we've done our bit, now let's, you know, unify, and there's room for everybody in the tent. And do you feel that the party is uh, becoming more unified? Because um, in the last week, uh, you had Amy Tarkanian's uh, nominations for uh, offices for Democrats. Um, your thoughts on that? You know, what's interesting to me with that one is if you look at it, uh, recently, the, I think the Douglas County Republican Central Committee actually kicked her out of right. the Central Committee. And they, Danny. And Danny as well. And if you look at it, it's fascinating to me that it's kind of like uh, one of my former colleagues I worked with, Roberson, you know, he endorsed 
uh, somebody for you know attorney general. He went with the incumbent, which is fascinating because in the primary he was completely for Tisha Black. So it's kind of interesting to me when their person loses the race, then all of a sudden magically they went to the incumbent. But if their person would have won the race, would they have not done that? And in the case with Tarkanians, I tend to see a little bit of a pattern that if somebody's opponent endorsed Congressman Amaday over Mr. Tarkanian, magically now they're endorsing their opponent. All right, so let me ask you this. Because, um, uh, to be honest, you, you and I are friends, and you're one of the smartest people that's come along in a long time in that legislative building. I'm worried I, you're buttering me up there. No, no, because I'm, I'm sad that, that your term is coming to an end, and I don't know what you're going to do for the public uh, next. Um, but you, you deserve a personal life for a while, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you there. Um, but, you know, should people be thinking straight party line ticket voting, or should they be looking at the individuals and deciding who makes the most sense for that office at that time? I always believe that people should be looking at who they feel is the best candidate overall for that particular office. But I think they also have to take a look nowadays at how that person performs within their own party. So if they're beholden to their party 100% and they do pathologically partisan stuff because the party tells them to, it doesn't matter what they say, it matters what they do. You know, I look at Catherine Cortez Masto. You, see, you talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, great lady. But then you look at some of the things she's done where she went after Brian Krolicky that time, no. You did a political vendetta against somebody. And it kind of shows that you're willing to go along with the agenda that is put forth from the national. And it's difficult to stand up against your own party. I've done it before. It's not fun. But you have to do what's best for the citizens of the state of Nevada as a whole. And a lot of times, that's not national politics. Um, it's kind of interesting. You're the first person to have raised the Brian Krilicki situation in a long time on this program. And it's been fascinating to watch um, Senator Masto, um, especially going out into rural Nevada and making a lot of friends out there. Mm -hmm. She's, her office has been very uh, instrumental in working with some of the rural counties on rural issues. And so when you have a good office staff, that works out. But again, I, I go back to the double standard that occurred with Brian Krolke, and you can even go to this uh, issue with Moose Arbery when he got in trouble. There was a John Ralston article I just read a while ago, you know, it was in my file from years ago when she prosecuted that case and he basically got a slap on the hand for embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars of campaign resources, but no serious penalty. So it seems rather problematic to have two sets of standards depending on who you're going against. Well, and that is politics. As, the, as they say, politics ain't beanbag. You know, and I understand that, but when she was the Attorney General, I don't think the Attorney General's office should be about politics. It should be about the law. And that's what bothers me. Uh, that's why me and Mr. Ford don't get along. You know, he sat there and argued on behalf of Sisolak, his office did, that the Constitution didn't say what the Constitution said, and that they had the right to violate what the citizens put into it, the two-thirds clause. I unanimously won that victory against the Nevada at the Nevada Supreme Court against Sislak and the Attorney General's office. And this was the Ford's this office. was the two thirds uh, for the taxes. Correct. But to sit there and even try to argue that point, come on! Everybody knew it was bogus. All right. So um, you brought up the Attorney General. Let's go down that road. Uh, mm -hmm. Sigal Chata. Um, she's gotten hammered for her comments about hanging from a crane. Um, your thoughts on that? On, on her candidacy and uh, Republicans uh, for Ford. You know, and I look at Republicans for Ford, I know that Mr. Roberson, you know, again, he was a friend of, he's a friend of mine. We've talked, you know, uh, former leader of the Senate Republicans, and I'm the current leader of the Senate Republicans. I feel that he was very much in favor of Tisha Black in the primary, and his friend lost in the primary, and now he's for Ford. Uh, as far as I'd like to see a matchup. I'd like to have a debate so that people can make their own opinions between Ford and between Seagal and figure out what they want to do. Um, he is adamant that that's not going to happen. Of course. And uh, most incumbents never want to have a debate. And so anything they can utilize as a w reason to not have that debate, they will. 
You know, and this goes back in my memory uh, to Barbara Vukanovic uh, when she was the lone congresswoman and Andy Barbano <coughs> was running against her, who, um, even though he's a Democrat, he ran, ran Randolph Townsend's original campaigns um, for the Senate and um, uh, before uh, Randolph became a Republican. And um, I, I think Andy said something to the effect of, you know, Tuesday follows Monday, and Barbara said, that's it. We're not debating. <laughs> so it was any, like you said, it was any excuse not to debate. Um, but, um, you know, Seagal was on the program and defended herself and said, this is a common phrase in Israel, even though some have disputed that, and, um, and that, that she's not a racist. Your thoughts on that? You know, I don't know enough about that whole situation. All I know is this, is that the citizens of the state of Nevada have the right to look at both candidates in an open forum and make a decision, and they should be allowed to do that. And if an individual doesn't want to, that's a problem. Uh, I think there needs to be further discussion about Mr. Ford and that little amendment he got snuck in for his uh, previous employer, Mr. Eglitz. You know, that raised this was the caps. Raising the caps, yeah. Raising the caps on what the attorneys get. You know, there was a limitation of 20, 30 percent, and now it's unlimited. And that recent ruling with the opioid crisis, that's a lot of money. He said on this program, uh, the Attorney General did, that he had nothing to do with the decision for uh, Eagle Adams to be awarded that contract. Um, do you agree? I think the Attorney General's office has the way to sway which way that decision goes. I understand he's saying he had no involvement, but when you have certain types of cases, they will naturally go to certain individuals that tend to have expertise in those fields, which happen to be his friends. Now, does that make it a bad thing? When you have... When, the, when, if they have the expertise that you're referring to. And that probably makes sense, but not once you give them unlimited attorney fees, basically. That's wrong. All right, we have much more. We'll be right back with State Senator James Settlemeyer after this timeout. Leaders find solutions. Politicians are part of the problem. Take Catherine Cortez Masto and Adam Laxalt. Cortez Masto co-sponsored a bill capping insulin costs. Adam Laxalt called a plan that caps costs reckless. No surprise, Laxalt is personally invested in big drug companies. When they make money, he makes money. That's the difference. Catherine Cortez Masto is lowering the cost of drugs. Adam Laxalt sells out and cashes in. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V. Org. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator James Settlemeyer of District 17, who does lead the uh, Republicans in the State Senate. Um, the Private Attorney General Act in California, tell me about that. So in California, it actually just passed, and what it does is for any type of a labor section of law. So instead of Nevada Revised Statutes, you know, California Revised Statute. So any section that is in existence that has anything to do with labor, a person can sue as basically a public member of the Attorney General's office 
on that section of law. And that's going to create so many lawsuits, it's not even going to be funny. And my real argument there is it's not fair because it's only dealing with labor law. So if it was property rights also, or any other, you know, it should be across the board to me. If you sue, of course, I'm probably a little biased because I didn't exactly get my full attorney fees, to say the least, uh, when I sued the governor and won. And it's really sad that you have the bragging rights, but you had to spend a lot of money to get those to prove that they violated the law. But again, in, in California, it's only for labor laws. And I'm worried that Ford would be interested in bringing an action like that because, sadly, it seems a lot of the bad ideas in California are just becoming to Nevada and becoming part of our law. And even some that Gavin Newsom himself has vetoed, Nevada passes. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, and that example is in you know, cannabis. You, you can't advertise on the freeways and stuff in California yet, and they vetoed that bill, but in Nevada we do. You know, it's just kind of crazy to me some of the things that I see that California does that we do, or worse, they veto and we still pass. Interesting days. Um, Here's the dichotomy about California. For as much as Nevada likes to bag on California, um, you look at you know, their budgets and their, their tax base, and they have so much extra money. Now, of course, they figure out how to spend it, but I mean, the surpluses there are phenomenal. The size of their economy. You know, they're basically the, the fourth the largest in the nation. You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy how large their economy is. But, but it, it, it can cover up a host of evils when, uh, when you have that much surplus and you're able to utilize it. Of course, they still haven't built that train from San Francisco to LA, but the Central Valley portion is doing very well. Okay, let's talk about Treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, your support for Michelle Fiore? I'm going for Ms. Fiore. You know, I look at what uh, Zach did this last interim. You know, I, again, I go back to if someone wants to be part of a union, great. If they don't want to be part of the union, great. I don't think we should have a law or do anything that unfer uh, unduly tilts the balance of that argument. And what he did is he stated that all the money that was going to go through the state infrastructure bank now has to go to unions. And that's wrong. Okay, so, so Michelle has your support. Correct. Okay, um, then the other person is Jim Marchant that I want to ask you about for Secretary of State. Um, the thing that kind of surprised me about Jim was that the first thing he said after he won his race was, I can't understand how I won. Um, that that kind of concerns me. Yeah. I haven't even looked at that race that much. You know, uh, Rashawn, I worked with him in the assembly. I haven't looked at his opponent, to tell you the truth, that much. So I worry, though, that elections are so M important. Mr. Mr. Aguilar is a very qualified man in a lot of different areas, including uh, heading up the athletic commission for the state for two years, but he was on it for I think a total of six years. Um, that's a that's a, a, a pretty lofty role. Yeah, um, one of the things I think I'm going to be looking at is, does a person believe in the concept of photo ID? You know, the first time they vote, uh, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think it helps secure the elections. First time they vote. Yeah, you know, after that, you've proven who you are. You know, you, theoretically, your photo doesn't you know change over time. Well, it does, but a little bit. But in that respect, photo ID the first time you register to vote, you know, to, cl you know, to clarify that you are who you say you are. I look at some of the changes that were done, again, by the majority party at 2 a.m. on a special session under the guise of COVID, changing all of our election law in the state of Nevada in a pathologically partisan way because, again, no Republican voted for it. I just have real problems with that. It, it starts to bring uncertainty and it makes people feel that their vote was taken. Now, there's no evidence necessarily showing that it was or it isn't, but it just makes people feel uncertain. And when you don't have people that have confidence in the voting process, they start to not participate in the voting process. And to me, that's wrong. So I think we should have done changes to election law that both sides could agree with. And to me, there are issues that we could have agreed with, you know, increasing ballot access, but yet also increasing security. Uh, you look at Clark County, I, want, I feel that all voter registrars should be elected, not appointed by county commissioners. You know, and you get into Clark County, the guy down there just basically did whatever the Clark County commissioners told him to do, and they actually sent out ballots to inactive voters. Now, did any of those inactive voters, you know, vote that shouldn't have? They're still looking into all that information. But to send ballots to people that 
hadn't existed for two years, you know, you'd send them mail and it would come back as saying, that's undeliverable, it's not a good address. Then you send them all a ballot and then you get those pictures, you know, an apartment complex with one guy getting 20 ballots at his house. Did anybody use those 20 ballots? Probably not. But it doesn't give people faith in the process. Okay, and, and uh, you know, uh, regular viewers and listeners to this program know that I've said on this program many times that I am totally in favor um, I'm not a person who wants to see my taxes increase, but I'm totally in favor of uh, putting in a few dollars extra to make sure that everybody that doesn't have an ID mm -hmm. can get an ID for free if they can't afford it. Um, the ACLU has said on this program, Todd Story at the time, um, that 10% of Nevadans don't have an ID. It, it stuns me because how do you live your life without having an ID? Yeah, and the other states that have passed it showed that there was actually a statistic that that entity likes to put out 10%. In the states that have gone to photo ID, they actually showed it was only 1.5% to 2% of the people out there that would vote, you know, did not have an ID. Uh, when I put forth a bill, I looked at it in the state of Nevada, and I thought at first the simple thing was to just give everybody an ID card through the DMV. But then a very valid argument came that many people don't live within 60 miles of a DMV. And I had to start thinking about that because way back at the time, Dulles County had a DMV office. Well, if you take that one out, then all of a sudden you're to Yarrington, and if you're out in the middle of Tonopah or you're out in the middle of White Pine, you're too far away. So how do we make sure that someone has access to get an ID? And the simple answer is, is you accept all forms of federal IDs. Uh, tribal federal ID should be accepted. After all, they're accepted at the federal level. The state should accept it. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, whatever is an acceptable level of ID, because I just do not see how people can function on any level, let alone voting, if they don't have a credible form of ID. Employment and everything else. Uh, but, you know, in, in the way, other way I was looking at trying to solve that one is that all the county sheriffs I talked to at that time, so we're talking over a decade ago, but they were willing to use the concealed carry weapons permit machine to make an ID for people for free. And that would actually bring the cost down from doing it through the state for like five to eight dollars to a buck twenty. You know, and, and, and I need to make the point, which I don't really say on the program very often, I don't think there's a problem with our election system, but if it makes the people who are complaining uh, feel better about, you know, the system to have the ID, I'm fine with that. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Nevada is suffering because of reckless Washington spending. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto voted to allow hundreds of millions of dollars of COVID relief funds to be wasted on frivolous projects not in Nevada. A luxury resort in Florida, soccer stadium in New Jersey, skiing in Iowa, a poet in Connecticut, French operas in Washington, D.C. We need help in Nevada, not silly spending in other states. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against wasteful spending to stop inflation. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator James Settlemeyer of District 17. So who's in the running for your job next session? 
Oh, as far as leadership for the Senate Republicans? Mm -hmm. You know, there are several individuals that are, are looking at it. It's just going to come down to, you know, who does the most to increase the size of the caucus. I think that's going to be the true question and who the caucus decides to vote for. Uh, generally, people who are leaving don't necessarily get very involved in, you know, trying to pick who their replacement is. So it really comes down to those new people that are coming in. They're the ones that are going to make that decision. Uh, if you have enough numbers where the Senate Republicans gain enough seats, I think it's pretty obvious to say that it will probably lean more towards somebody from the South because that's where all the seats are going to be. If for some reason the Senate Republicans go down in numbers, well, then it might lean more towards a Northern leadership because, again, those are where the votes are going to be. Um, from all the private polling I'm hearing about at this point, it seems like the red wave is not likely to happen. I'm not saying that, that Republicans are not going to get elected, but just the red wave that was being anticipated a year or so ago, not going to happen. Yes or no, you agree? You know, sadly, when you've got somebody spending a billion dollars of our taxpayer dollars to uh, give it to individuals, basically as campaign fodder, through the Interim Finance Committee, that's what I see. He still has over a billion dollars to distribute. I think that tends to make people kind of forget some of the things that went wrong, and that's a problem. Okay. Hopefully the Nevadans will take a look at it, though, and vote accordingly. Okay, and you are very diplomatic, but you are referring to the governor. Correct. And that's where we have to leave it. Uh, please come back, and you're not that far from where our studio is in Carson City, so I am anticipating dragging you in a whole bunch during the session so we can get commentary from you. All right. Thank you, Th Sam. Thank you. And we'll be right back. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mendham with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Minden is CB steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. All new DC Cafe and Bar, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Nevada Newsmakers Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, NevadaNewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.